evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming to you live from Vaqueros Ranch Stadium in San Antonio, Texas, where the Vaqueros have welcomed the St. Louis Gladiators into town for Monday night SFL action. We've had a great weekend of football, and we got more football coming to you tonight as the Vaqueros at 2-2 two and two welcome the Gladiators at 3-1 and one here into Texas. The Gladiators will wear gold, San Antonio will wear blue, and we are excited to be on Twitch. This is the SFL brought to you by APM Music, and I am Andy Hamilton, your play-by-play commentator. Quite a game we got to for you tonight. Jimmy Stevens is along with me. Jimmy, what are you looking for in tonight's contest? Now we're going to see a tale of two different offensive styles. We've got the uh, San Antonio team that throws the ball all over the field as, a, as opposed to our uh, – oh, my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm a little flustered here today. That's all right. The Gladiators are going to defend the south side, and the Vaqueros will kick off, which means Joey Langdon will line up the offense, and that – is where we will start on this Monday night, the first game of a doubleheader as St. Louis is in San Antonio, and then later Vancouver will head to Houston for SFL Fan Night, and we got the SFL today in the middle of that, so it's going to be a great night, and we are underway here from Texas. The ball will be returned from the goal line out to the left side to the 21, and that is where the St. Louis offense will set up shop. Excuse me, I misspoke earlier and said that the Vaqueros were going to start with the ball. Instead, we're going to see a new face on the offensive side of the ball, Jimmy. Yeah, you got first-time quarterback uh, Asil, I believe is his last That name. is correct. Dylan Asil, number 12, will lead the offense onto the field for the very first time as a gladiator. And we're going to see what his first snap will hold with 10.56 here left in the first. And it will be a handoff to the veteran, Denzel Diaz, who will pick up two. And this is a team we're going to see pretty much everything goes through Diaz with St. Louis. It's a very run-based offense. You're going to try and control the clock and throw it when they have to. So that will set up second and eight, and the Gladiators will head back to the line. They are very much a run-based offense from what we have seen in the past couple weeks. I actually called their game last week against Chicago, and it was quite the contest. And now AC will throw, checks it down to Diaz out of the backfield, and he will pick up another five yards to make it third and manageable. As St. Louis offense, they're ranked fourth overall, shockingly enough, even though it's a run-based offense. Yeah, a, lo a lot of production coming out of Diaz, and they're probably going to look for that tonight, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, they're last in pass yardage uh, and uh, in the top five in, in, or top ten in rushing yardage. Third down, handoff to Diaz. He shut down and denied. The Vaqueros make a huge stop, and they're going to force a punt. It was number 48. That's Obi Okoye, the inside linebacker, in his first season in the SFL, making a big play on third down. And this is a uh, lower-ranked rush defense as well. They're, the San, uh, San Antonio defense is only ranked 14th in rushing yards again, so for them to shut that down early is a, is a good sign. So they will punt, and the kick is away on fourth and three. Nine and a half minutes to play, and the Vaqueros will start their first drive from scrimmage. They're going to start that at the 38 after the return there by, I believe, uh, number 36, who is not... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. That's Nicholas Warner, the strong safety. So now Joey Langdon will lead the offense out and uh, not really run heavy on this side of the ball, right? No, they're a pass, pass, passing time type of team. They're uh, 14th in yards, but they throw the ball a lot. They'll start with a run, and that is Anderson Silver, number 28 down the left sideline. Silver to the 30, and he's pushed out of bounds there. At the 26, what a run for Anderson Silver in his second SFL game. That was a great run here. As you watch, he, it's just a simple off tackle, and he makes the, I think it was a safety miss with that spin move, and they're going against Trend and going with running first, trying to use Anderson Silver as much as they can. Pulling a play out of the Gladiators playbook with the handoff to... Silver, who's playing and has all of the yards now with one play, and they're already into the Gladiators' territory. Langdon to throw, moves in the pocket. That'll be a hand or a pitch to Silver. He's going to lose two yards, but a completion for Joey Langdon here. 
Yeah, Silver had a good good week last week too. He 27 for 109. Didn't have any touchdowns, but he also caught six balls. So it looks like they're going to use him in multiple ways. If your friends and teammates aren't here, make sure they get here. We got plenty of SFL action tonight. Monday night football, two games coming at you. The first one here from Texas so far is a good one as Langdon will throw on second down. That is a completion there. Introducing himself to you is number 87. That's Daly Holder, part of the Daly package that these Vaqueros have on the outside. Daly Holder and Daly Hornish are the two receivers, 81-87 respectively, um, and they get it done, Jimmy. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a bad pun. They get it done daily, um, and they're going to start out here on third and seven with eight minutes and try and see if they can punch this one in. Short drop, and he goes down. The pressure was immediate right up the middle. It's a huge sack for the Gladiators. Um, and that's going to be big time if you're trying to make a stop here in the red zone, as they do, and force a fourth and eight. <clears throat> yeah, non-contract breaking through. Uh, make the, the sack there. You'd expect it to be Eisenhower or LaRue, but the sack's a sack. doesn't matter who you get it from. So now the kicker is on. Antonio Flowergrass, 6'3", the rookie, will try and put the first points of the game on the board, and he will do so from 40. San Antonio has the lead with 7.25, and the first will pause for station identification. This is the SFL brought to you by APM Music. The Simulation Football League is presented by APM Music and is the official theme music provider of the SFL. Listen to their Champions Will Rise soundtrack at apmmusic.com today and search through thousands of tracks to boost the quality of your stream just like us. APM Music, production music library and custom music house. So the return will come out to the 23. If you're looking for music for your streams, APM Music is a great source for that. Head over to their website. There will be a ticker down at the bottom that will display their information shortly here. Make sure you head over there. Some great stuff, and the SFL has had a great soundtrack this year and a great soundtrack for this game as the Vaqueros are up 3-0 over St. Louis. And on the first play, a seal will throw, and he almost forced that one into the hands of a defender. That was triple coverage there. Uh, it was a pretty risky throw, thrown into triple coverage, non-contract with the knockdown. He's lucky he wasn't intercepted. ACL's got to make better decisions than that. Our viewer count is looking low. Make sure your friends get here. We're going to be giving free shout-outs for all of the bits we received tonight. I am watching the chat like a hawk, and it's second and 10 from the 23. A seal changing the play at the line. I feel like they gave him a lot of power this week, and he will throw, and it's caught, and then fumbled, and dove on by, I believe, the Vaqueros, who have a turnover. Yeah, it looks like Nicholas Warner maybe if, might have picked that up. I, I think this one's going to get called back because it didn't look like he had uh, position long enough. Very, oh, that fumble. very quick play we saw last night in one of the bigger games of the uh, football world. We still might not know what a catch is, and St. Louis is going to go ahead and bargain on that and try and challenge this one here. Yeah, I think this is going to get overturned. That was, uh, he didn't have possession long enough for that to be a fumble. There's just no way. Yeah, it was really, really close when you look at that replay. I, I think this one's going to come back. Yeah, so do I. I think this is just going to be an incomplete pass. After review, the play stands. Oh! The receiver did not wow! The ball and is therefore incomplete. The Gladiator will be charged with a timeout. Wrangler's ball. Well, Jimmy. Wow, wow, wow. The, uh, the refs have not been nice to me, and now that I'm on the call, they're not going to be nice to St. Louis. That is going to be a first down. Vaqueros, Joey Langdon leads the team back on the field. If you're St. Louis, the positive here is you held him out of the end zone last time. If you can do it again, you'll be all right. Yeah, this St. Louis defense is, is a solid defense. They're ranked number four in the league. Langdon incomplete on first down. He was looking for number 81. That's Daly Hornish. Hornish is the rookie of the two dailies in his first season in the SFL. 
It's a Thank good you. good hit there coming across. I think that was Colin Douglas who just kind of lowered the helmet. He wasn't even guarding Hornish. Um, it looked like he was, you know, just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it looked like it. He's a uh, good job knocking the ball out, that's for sure. Douglas, a very good veteran corner. Um, I know St. Louis was thrilled to be able to keep him, and when you pair him with a guy on the other side, like Aaron Arrington, that's going to get dangerous. They're going to go heavy set here on second down. Langdon stands in the pocket, delivers. How was that caught? First down to the 21. That is number 87, Daly Holder. Wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> he threaded the needle on that one. I don't know how he got that in there. Great arm strength by Joey Langdon. Watch this. Oh, Just over top of the linebacker's hands, Aiden Friday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Aiden Friday, this is his second season in the year. We talked about before the game how much Joey Langdon has improved this season from last season. Last season, he threw, I think, more interceptions than he did touchdowns. Um, in some games, it felt like more interceptions than completions, but that throw right there, I think, epitomizes it. And down the right sideline is Silver. He is making himself known. The uh, player who replaced Jason German, who was the uh, head point of a lot of controversy last season, is really showing why he deserves the spot. Yeah, and they're, they're running a pretty more balanced offense this week than I thought we'd see. I thought they'd still be chucking it all over the field with Joey Langdon. And to your point, yeah, Joey Langdon last year, or for his career, he's got 31 touchdowns and 43 interceptions. But he's definitely creeped that number up from the start of the season. Or was way more interceptions than, than touchdowns. Definitely. So they're going to go with a two-receiver set. They do have a brand-new tight end here in San Antonio, maybe trying to get him his first touchdown. Instead, they'll check it to Silver, who shut down without gaining a yard. A good open field tackle will keep San Antonio at the nine. Yeah, there's that classic swing pass that you see a lot in the SFL. Sometimes it's open, and sometimes it gets shut down, just like it did there. Yeah, the second swing pass in a row. We'll see what they do here on second and goal from the nine. St. Louis looking to make a second stop down at this end. Langdon to throw, looking, tipped, incomplete. It was nearly picked off. He was trying to put it in the hands of Daly Holder, and St. Louis almost had a takeaway. Wow, that uh, wouldn't be a Monday night if we didn't get our weekly Plinko reference in and there it was that ball come bouncing around like plinko freeman peltier had a hand on it but could not haul it in and that'll be third and goal from the nine big play for the gladiators if they can get the stop also a big play for san antonio trying to go up by two scores four wide receivers out on the field silver is the lone back for joey langdon Quick throw, and it's incomplete. That was a bang-bang throw. Looked a little bit like the play we saw out of Seattle a few years ago that got picked off at the goal line. Yeah, it was a little quick slant or arrow route there. It's, that's a pretty dicey throw down that end of the field. A lot of defenders all over the place there. He's lucky he didn't get picked off. I've seen it work. I've seen it miss. And now a flower glass will come on for his second field goal attempt. He hit from 40 just a moment ago, and now he will try and make it a six-point game. Kick is on its way, and it's straight down Broad Street from 25. Six-nothing, the Vaqueros on top. Are you surprised to see how this game has gone so far, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to a degree. I mean, I, I think St. Louis got hosed on that, that fumble, but St. Louis is the number four-ranked defense, and... And to have San Antonio moving the ball like they are on him is, is quite surprising. So the Vaqueros tee it up. They took the ball back from the Gladiators' last drive, and now they will try... The Gladiators will try, excuse me, to put some points on the board themselves. They'll have to start the drive at the 20, 80 yards between them and the goal line. Um, what do you think, Dylan Aseel, first game, how do you think he's looking so far? I think the nerves are getting to him a little bit. That first, that he's made a couple of questionable throws. I, I really can't blame him for that f the fumble. I, like I said, I don't I don't think that was a fumble at all. And I'm, you kind of felt the same way. I um, yeah, I definitely agree. I, hopefully, they'll be able to open up their offense a little more with him. So it's going to be first down, and they will hand it off to Diaz, who shifts around, and Obi Okoye shuts that down after one. We've been saying his name a lot so far. Yeah, he's got, he had himself a decent week last week. Five tackles, two assists, no, no, no sacks, but 
as a as a uh, rookie linebacker, he's been doing quite well, making an impression. Six one two thirty nine. Those are some good measurables if you're looking for an inside linebacker. Um, and he is proving tonight that he was well worth the money that San Antonio gave him. On second down, they'll feed Diaz again, who has a hole, and he's down the right side. Does he have the speed to get to the 50, the 45, and he's closed down and tackled by B.J. Armstrong at the 44, but some life out of the Gladiators here late in the first. This is what the Gladiators do. I mean, when you, when you check their offense, they're not not—they're still the number four offense in the league, surprisingly enough, but it's all, all on uh, Diaz's feet, and... She proves it right there why. He's uh, he's their force. It goes all through Diaz. And he was able to make it work there. And it's a new set of downs for the Gladiators. Same formation here. Very heavy on the line. And they will give a delayed handoff. And Obi Okoye just shuts that down. That's a loss of three. Yeah, he didn't want any part of that. He'd had enough of that. All right, let's 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 shut this running game down. They were embarrassed by that last run, and they, they showed it there on that play. Mighty RX will send in a bit. We appreciate that, Mighty. Again, we're shouting out all the bits we receive here in this first game. I can't speak for the second game, but for this first one, all of them are getting shout-outs. Second and long, and the Gladiators will throw a seal check down to Diaz, and Diaz and Okoye meet for what seems like the 80th time already, and that'll gain two. Uh, Diaz, it, it, by running back standards in the league, is very small at 5'6", 205. He's not like those bruisers that they have in the, uh, like, such as Ray Bentley and whatnot. Well, if Diaz and Okoye didn't know each other before tonight's game, they do now. And on third and long, a seal is going to try and convert. Plenty of time in the pocket. Delivers, and it's incomplete. Yeah, questionable throw there. He this would, is a team that's last in third down percentage, and uh, they kind of proved it there. Why? It's just just uh, bad timing on the throw. I don't know if the seal just didn't see him in time or if it was a bad route or what, but now they're giving the ball back to San Antonio to try and extend their lead. Well, and you'd think with a, with a short week coming in, first week in the league, that you don't have the time to kind of build some of those relationships with the receivers that you'd like to have by this point in the season so st louis is going to have to work on that as this game continues um and until they get to that point they might have to rely on denzel diaz to get it done yeah and and, and against this defense he should have pretty decent success uh, with san, san antonio only being 14th against the run that uh makes things pretty pretty good for the st louis offense yeah, for the most part, it looks like it'll depend on Okoye, but on the offensive side of the ball now, St. Louis has to try and get a stop. Langdon checked down. There's Silver with a spin move, and he's flattened after a pickup of seven. Nice hit. That was a big hit, big hit but a uh, non-contract line. I don't know if that was a lineman or linebacker, but he thumped him pretty good. He might be thinking twice about going after that guy again. But when you have players like playing like Silver is, you got to do something to try and throw them off, even if that's a small or a smack to the head. They will give it up the middle to Silver again, and he finds his way to the 24. They're starting to have success with this running attack, which I think is a little against what they've done so far all year. They must have found a, a workhorse here in Silver, and they're liking him. And so far, it's working. Aiden Friday, the linebacker on the St. Louis side. Number 55 is the one who's going to have to match up with him all night if they continue those inside runs. But here on first down, Langdon throws off his back foot on the run, and it's caught! Daly Holder, what a throw from Joey Langdon. Wow, that was a very unorthodox throw by Langdon. I'm surprised he saw him out there. Great job to put it where only his guy can get it. A little corner post. Didn't look like the safety fell for it. He just was in the wrong position to get at that ball. Actually, it was corner calling Douglas. Douglas had a pretty solid game last week against uh, Chicago. I think he might have had a turnover, if I'm remembering correctly, but my, I did not do as much work as I should have on that game. 
Langdon will throw here to Silver on the right side, and he's got some space down the right sideline to the 30-yard line of St. Louis. Anderson Silver getting it done for the Vaqueros. Wow, it looks like San Antonio's found themselves a weapon here. Showed it a little bit last week, but they're really putting him into the game this week. And he's he's making making uh, St. Louis pay. I don't think St. Louis was expecting this at all. Well, the Vaqueros, or the uh, Gladiators, excuse me, did put a lot of money into their front four. They do have two uh, contracted defensive linemen, and the, the swing passes are kind of working against that because by the time that the... Uh, Running back, Silver in this case, catches the ball and gets past that defensive line. They, they really can't do much. No, and he's got enough speed just to get away from them as well. There we go again. This is the fullback they'll check it down to. He can't get anywhere. So that's going to bring up second and 11. It was Kyle Scott. Yeah, or there's that's no, no, that I was, heard. excuse me, that might, no, that might have been the first catch for uh, Ricardo Hernandez, the rookie. Oh, it may have been, yeah. I didn't see we, his number. Yeah, we might be dealing with a number issue there. I can't quite tell, but that could have been Poncho's first catch. I don't want to discredit him if it was. Langdon, good movement in the pocket. He'll finally scramble with it, but he does take a hit at the end of the play. Not something you want to see as Aiden Friday, a good linebacker, gets a free shot at uh, Joey. And coach has got to be putting his hands over his head when he sees Langdon taking off because if he gets injured, this offense is going to look completely different. I do like the uniform matchup a lot between these two teams and what they put on the, the screen here tonight in prime time. Langdon fires, caught, Holder shut down! A great open field tackle. That's the Colin Douglas I was talking about. What a play in the open field. Uh, great job by Douglas to shut that out route down before the line before reaching the first down markers. He had himself a decent game last week. Six six tackles, one assist. And he's just adding to that today. That will take us to the end of the first quarter. Six nothing Vaqueros over the Gladiators at home with a chance to add to their lead after the break. I fooled all of you. There was no break. It's going to be Flower Glass here to try and add his third field goal of the night. So far, the MVP of this game. Yeah, interesting that we still haven't really discussed is the fact that uh, San Antonio is running both a contract kicker and punter. Very unusual in the league. High snap is corralled. Kick is straight down Broad Street again. It's from 37 this time. He's hit from 40, 37, and 25. Antonio Flower Grass is clean three for three and the vaqueros are up nine to nothing oh my mistake they don't have a punter i believe they did at one point they might have cut him out no i'm thinking st louis has the punter my mistake either way it's nine nothing st louis though i i will give them credit have done a very good job of limiting the damage because nine nothing i mean you're talking about two possessions but just barely yeah, and with the ball possession that San Antonio has had over St. Louis, to shut them down just to three field goals is, is definitely a, uh, a win for the defense. Now the offense has got to do something to give that defense a break. So it's going to be first and ten. Gladiators get the ball back. Still plenty of time before the half as we just broke into the second quarter. Vaqueros moving fast. Chat is telling us they that the Vaqueros had a punter in week one. Handoff here to Diaz off the left side. Diaz getting real shifty, is able to pick up nine. It seems like he ran for 30 yards there just to get nine and fall short of the first down. Still a good run, and, and again, this is what St. Louis is going to have to do against this weak San Antonio run defense if they can continue to run the ball. They still can keep in this game. It's kind of what their offense is going to be. It's going to be a ball control offense. With the way that San Antonio's defense is built, you would imagine that they would run to the outsides with the inside linebacker and the defensive tackle. That run, though, goes right up the middle, and Diaz is able to find his way to the 39. Maybe a little bit of Barry Sanders syndrome where you just can't see him behind that line, so you don't know which hole he's going to come through. 
because he's just so small. Yeah, very patient. He, I think he ran into his own man a little bit right there, maybe. This is the worst camera angle I've ever seen besides the one where they show the guy's pants. Uh, but there, Diaz able to make it, and a, a good open field tackle by B.J. Armstrong, the second one from him, that probably prevented another touchdown. Yeah, for sure. He would have been gone if he had got by that guy. Dylan a seal so far tonight, so good. The one fumble, not his fault. He dumps it to Diaz off the left side. A good block. Diaz breaks through Armstrong's tackle, and Okoye deheads him at the 45, and now the Gladiators go and hurry up. Yeah, that, that ball almost got picked off. You saw the defender flash through there. He just missed it. Cut into Diaz's hand. He means something about it. I like the confidence from a seal. He sidesteps a tackle, throws, and completes a nice open field, finding the man. I believe that was Elijah Swaim who made the catch. Interesting that St. Louis is going with this hurry up right now. Not what you would expect. A seal throwing again. Nope, he's down. The pressure got to him. A huge sack there by the non-contract end. And they're going to go for it again. I like the way a seal is keeping the tempo up in his first game, keeping the Vaqueros off guard. He wants it all, and there was no one in the area. I don't understand this decision. They should have huddled up here with third and 17. Nine minutes to go in the half. Shakes one tackle. A seal still on his feet. Dumps, and it is incomplete. There is a penalty on the play. He was looking for Nick Finch. I think you're going to see some pass interference here. On the, uh, I believe that's a non-contract defensive back. That is going to be against Obi Okoye, the inside linebacker. They're going to get him for pass interference, and that will move the ball to the 32 and give the Gladiators a fresh set of downs. Definitely not what you wanted. You caught St. Louis in the hurry up. It was not working. No, it was not at all. And like I said, it, for them to go into hurry up on third and 17 was kind of a, a questionable decision. It worked out for them with the pass interference, but who would have thought they would want to huddle up there? Now in the shotgun, Diaz to his right. I believe that's Swaim, or it might be Swaim in the backfield with him. I know they like to run that formation a lot. They'll give it to Diaz, and he is able to push forward for three, and now we go back to hurry-up mode. I guess this was put into the game plan. I don't believe this is what they normally do. Handoff, Diaz. He will pick up another two. I think it might be if Diaz is, has better stamina than these defenders for S San Antonio. Uh, why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he can get a break one loose again. They Sorry. will give it to him on third and five, and he's brought down from behind. A vicious tackle from Obi Okoye. Kind of question the play call there. I mean, I, I know they were in hurry up, but to run third and five, you got to think they're going to at least try and pass the ball there, and instead they went with three straight runs, and now they're trying for the field goal. A gritty game so far here in San Antonio. Get your friends here. If they are not here, get your teammates in here. Tag everyone in your team chats. It's worth it. The kick is away for St. Louis, but he shanked it right. Graham Northrup, no good. He pushed it to the right, and St. Louis comes up empty. Wow, oh, that I mean, this is, those are the chances you take when you go with a non-contract. I know they went with the punter, but uh, maybe they should have spent the money and got themselves a kicker. They'd be uh, on the board right now. I believe that was Jay Franz in the chat who gave us a shout-out. Says we're making the game exciting. That's the whole point. Uh, 4-3 out of the Gladiators. Langdon almost threw a pick. That was the big the big man back in coverage. Number 70, Manny Eisenhower, the tackle who dropped. Yeah, the big former professional wrestler from Tokyo making some defensive, doing some coverage and making some tackles in the open field. Manny Eisenhower, you got to love it. Almost had a pick. God, I would have loved a big boy run. But this throw is downfield and caught. Number 87, Daly, hold of the 22. Another dime from Joey Langdon finds its way into the hands of Holder. I completely thought this was picked off by uh, 21 there, Pelte, but he missed it. And that's what happens when you go for the ball instead of the tackle. Some yeah, of those... Your... Sorry. The... No, you're fine. 50-50 decisions. I also thought that Peltier at least got a hand to it. Instead, Langdon... Uh, is able to thread the needle. 
And San Antonio's moving again as Silver is able to pick up six on that carry as we hit seven minutes left in the half. Yeah, I really like this mix that we're seeing out of San Antonio. I mean, I think they missed this earlier in the season. And uh, if they if they continue to run this run-pass ratio where they are, they could do a lot of damage here later on in the season. That hey. Western Division isn't very strong, so... Yeah, they, they got to get through Alaska, who's at the top of it, but they're sitting at 2-2. Two two. Langdon fires, completes out to Daly Hornish, who's able to find his way to the 8-yard line. So, uh, the Gladiators seem to be struggling a little bit with this receiving core. Yeah, it's not what I expected. Uh, uh, I mean, against the pass, they are 16th, so they give up a lot of pass yards. So it, 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 I, I, that was the route I thought that San Antonio would go and just exploit that pass defense, but... I mean, when you're getting what you're getting out of sil silver, why not? First and goal. They're in the shotgun. Langdon stands in the pocket, delivers the check down. I believe that's Hernandez, the tight end, and Pancho can't get there. He's shut down at the six. Yeah, it, it was, and uh, that's his second catch, I do believe, in the SF career. We weren't sure about that first one, or did maybe I, I think one, the but... first one was his. I think this is his second. I like. I think yeah. they're pulling him out of the backfield, which I like a little bit more than putting him up on the line. Yeah, it's a different, different, different type of uh, way of using your tight end. That's for sure. Langdon to Silver, and he's gonna walk in untouched for the first touchdown of the game. Anderson Silver is in, and the Vaqueros add to their lead. Great play. That the, I saw this very similar play last week when I was calling the Alaska game. Pretty much the exact same thing. Just a wide open running back. Nobody there to cover him. He could read the paper before he got in there. So they're going to try and make it 16 nothing. which if you believe it or not, Jimmy, still only a two-possession game, If they even if they hit this field goal here. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's something else. You got to put kudos to the St. Louis defense for keeping them to 16 points for the amount of time they've been on the field. It's, uh, it's offense for St. Louis. Got to get something going. Kick is through. We're going to pause 30 seconds, and we'll be back here on the SFL Network on Twitch tonight, brought to you by APM Music. Follow the SFL on Twitter, at SimulationFL, on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels. You're already here, right? Might as well stay tuned. Get league updates on your phone while browsing the internet and make sure you never miss a live broadcast. Thank you for supporting the SFL. Kick is away. The return is going to be brought back by St. Louis to the 23. Gladiators got to get it going here. What do you think has been working for him? Diaz has been doing all right, but the throws have kind of been what has sparked some uh, excitement for the Gladiators tonight. Yeah, I think they need to open it up a little bit. Give... Uh... They see a little chance here. Let him show what he's got for an arm. You can still use Diaz as your prime guy. Just open it up. Make make them think more about just the run game. A seal to throw. Stands. Delivers. Oh, a great hit. Jars the ball loose. Nick Finch had his hands on it, and Jared Olsen lays the wood on him, and the ball pops out. Yeah, great jump. Jump and try by Finch. ACL puts it only where Finch can get it. And Jared Olsen with the uh, tackle knock it away. It looked like, uh, was that a lot non-contract in there as well? I didn't get the other number. It very well could have been. Um, I, I know Nicholas Warner is also back there along with Armstrong. 47, though, I believe is a non-contract um, if that's who it was. And now St. Louis is going with this heavy set, which has either worked really well for them or kind of left them out to dry. We'll see what happens here on second down. A seal throws. Caught. Nice completion there as Elijah Swaim falls forward for seven. You got to like that a little bit, throwing it out of that formation just to keep San Antonio honest so they're not just all out blitzing, going with cover zero or something crazy like that. Let's see what they do here. Hopefully they, they throw the ball just to, to keep them on. Third and short. Handoff Diaz. Got it. Nice run from Denzel Diaz. I thought he was going to get stuffed in the backfield, but he was able to pick up the first down to the 35, 67 yards tonight so far. 
Great. That was a gutsy call. I mean, I thought they would throw it just to uh, try and keep San Antonio off guard. And they went with their meal ticket, and he got them the first down. For those of you looking for Cameron Irvine on broadcast, he'll be on later tonight as Houston takes on Vancouver. But for now, you got to deal with me. A seal dumps off there out of the backfield. That is a nice catch by the fullback for two. And sometimes it's not about picking up the first down. It's about just making the next play a little bit more manageable. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with having a third down. Just make it manageable. You don't want third and nine, third and eight. You can get in third and three or less. Your whole playbook's available. Changing the play here. The seal will throw. He will throw the out route. Caught. Turning up field is Finch who fights forward to the 48. Good catch and run. Getting those yards after catch for Nick Finch. That's the second time where he's thrown one where I thought it was going the other way. And he, he just dimed it in there to Finch. And Finch makes the first down. Great, great throw by ACL. They're, they're moving the ball. I like what they're doing here. They've, they've opened it up a bit. Got to keep an eye on the clock. You want to score the last points of the half if you have the ball this late. So that's what they'll do as they hand off to Diaz, who picks up another yard. Just try and kind of get some of that clock up there. You don't want to give Joey Langdon too much time. No, no, not with that offense. They can throw the ball down the field real quick and get a quick strike score. That was uh, an interesting run by Diaz there. It looked like he decided to juke himself right into his own blocker. Cost him some yards, I think. When you run into a big man like that and you're as small as Diaz is, sometimes that doesn't work for you. See, a seal dumps it off to uh, Swain there. He's close to the first down. They're going to say he's short. Got to love that animation right there. It doesn't get better than that. No, that's fantastic. You'll never see that in, in a game of Madden. Watch if for anyone, and if Ryan Moody's watching, this is the one to do the breakdown on. Look at this tackle. He falls over the man as he's tackling him. Never, you'll never see that. That That's a glitch 100% of the time in any other football game. Back to this game. It's going to be third and inches. I mean, they've I, thrown out of this formation a couple times. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to run. A seal changes the play. Diaz stood up and dropped a yard shy. Decision time. Wow. If he had gone left, he would still be running. I don't know if you saw that or not, but everybody collapsed to the to our side of the screen. If he had gone far, 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 excuse me, far side of the screen, he'd still be running for a touchdown. There was nobody there. It was big number 99, Bill Lett, the punter for the Gladiators. A non-contract will kick it towards the left. It's going to bounce at the 6, bounce at the 2, bounce at the 1, and roll into the end zone. Gladiators elected not to grab it, and, and I think that's a smart move. More often than not, when you see someone grab the ball that close, they just end up falling in the end zone or stumbling, and it doesn't end up well. I, I'd take my chances on where that ball's going to stop. Absolutely. I completely oh. agree with you on that one. It's going to go into the 20. If it's going to go to the 20 anyway, why... why yeah. Use your own momentum to get it there. So this will be this should be the last play before the two minute warning. And then the Vicaros will have all three timeouts and two minutes to work with. This throw is caught up the right sideline. Nice grab and run there. Joey Langdon completes another pass. That'll take us to the break. Two minute warning. It's San Antonio 16, St. Louis still trying to get on the board. Thirty-six viewers here on Twitch. Make sure you get everyone in here. We got a double header of action along with the SFL Today show coming next. And San Antonio is going to try and make it interesting. There he is, Poncho, PJ Hernandez, or Ricardo Hernandez, excuse me. They used to have a PJ Hernandez, and Ricardo makes that grab up the seam. Interesting formation when you're in uh, two minute two-minute offense to run a two-tight end set, but whatever works for you, and they're not rushed because they've huddled up for the next play. They do have all their timeouts, so they do have lots of time. Yeah, the, the clock is not the issue. The issue will be getting into scoring range. If the Gladiators can get a stop here, I think that bodes well because sometimes you see these second-half adjustments, and it works really well. That is a check down to Hernandez. He will only get a yard. Uh, Mighty RX says in the chat that PJ Hernandez plays for Alaska. Someone's going to have to let me know if they are related. 
Yeah, maybe. It seems like they're using Hernandez almost like an back as opposed to a tight end. He's lining up quite a bit in the backfield. Lots of uh, family relations in the league this season. I, I really love it. I love it. Get the whole family involved as Silver is able to pick up a yard. The Vaqueros will use their first timeout. Do you agree with that call? Uh, not really. I mean, again, they were going with a two in a uh, two-minute warning situation. I just don't think it's the right way to go, especially with the way this team can throw the ball. Minute and five left. If you don't get the first down here, you're giving Dylan a seal some time to kind of make a legend out of himself if he can put points on the board. But Langdon will throw, and that is tipped away. Great defensive play there. Freeman Peltier, the longtime safety for the Gladiators, says, no, 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 not today. We're going to make you pay for that timeout. Uh, fifth year man, he had a sack, or uh, a interception last week. He almost had one this week. To add to his career total of 12, that was a risky throw. There was a lot of blue jerseys around. Or, excuse, yeah, blue, excuse me. Gray, gray, gold jerseys, yeah, that's what you're looking for. Day. Arminius Davis will be on to punt. Rookie in the league gets it away. Nice move there. The rookie able to execute the punt. Unfortunately, it'll bounce into the end zone for the Vaqueros. Not what you want when you pay the money for the punter. Um, we talked a little bit before the broadcast, Jimmy, about how we weren't necessarily looking for, you know, we were trying to see how the kicker-punter balance would work out for the Vaqueros, and right there, it kind of fell flat. Yeah, I mean, the, the punter one has is, is been one that's been up for debate in the league all year. Uh, we saw it work pretty well in the San Francisco game yesterday where they pinned their opposing team into their own, own end of the two, but... He's getting blasted through the end zone. It's kind of pointless. Diaz up the right sideline to the 34. Now St. Louis going hurry up. That kind of worked a little bit for him earlier. Let's see what they can do here. They are in a poor formation for it. Not a lot of receivers on the field. A seal will throw. Quick out route there to Swaim. He turns it upfield for nine. They do, I believe, have all of their... No, they have two. They burned one on the challenge earlier. So St. Louis at two timeouts here with 25 seconds and ticking. You hope that a seal would use one as Diaz catches that. They're down to 19 seconds, 18, and rolling. Use the timeout. What are you doing? Might be some rookie Whoa. jitters. Diaz, the handoff won't get there, and they might just let this thing run out. A shutdown play there by Bailey Baca. The defensive tackle will take us to the halftime break. 16-0. Vaqueros on top at home.
We're returning you to Vaqueros Ranch Stadium here in San Antonio, Texas. I am Andy Hamilton along with Jimmy Seasons. This, if you don't know what it is, is the SFL on Twitch presented by APM Music. We got great SFL action for you here today. The Gladiators are going to now kick to the hometown Vaqueros to start this second half. And we are back underway. The Vaqueros lead 16 to nothing. And their return will come up to the 30-yard line. And Joey Langdon, along with one of her, his better players, Anderson Silva, comes back onto the field. Jimmy, St. Louis gave up only 97, or excuse me, only 48 yards in the rushing game last week to Chicago in their 17-16 win at home. Do you think they're able to bottle Silver up here in the second half? You got you got to think they will, but it, it, that's when that scary passing attack of San Antonio you know, might kick in, and this is a great passing defense that St. Louis has. Langdon throws on first down, an incomplete pass there. Well defended. He was looking for number 81, Daly Hornish. But, I mean, if you're the owners of both of these teams, I mean, St. Uh, San Antonio's owner, Greg Corky, who's 5'11 all time, is right. right now in second to place in his division. That's that's a w way better situation than he was last year where they finished 3-9. and nine. Dezekiel just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Dezekiel. We appreciate the subscription. If any of you have Twitch Prime, you get one free subscription. If you want, you can use it on the SFL. Langdon to throw. Dumps this one out to Silver, and he's shut down in the backfield. Great open field play. I think that's Colin Douglas again. Colin Douglas making a name for himself tonight. Once again, great job. And as I was saying earlier, I mean, the owner, the co-owners of St. Louis, uh, Colin Northrup and Dwan Schindler, they were 3-9 and nine as well last year, and they finished seventh in their division. Now they're second. That's a pretty good jump. Third and 12 for Langdon. Wants it all. Deep left side. Tipped. Tipped twice. Incomplete. Well defended. Freeman Peltier along with Colin Douglas is on the side. You talked about Douglas and Dwayne Schindler. Great owners. I had the actually the pleasure of meeting Colin last uh, season in the summer. Um, and he, him and his dad are delightful people. His dad actually used to play tight end for Vancouver. Another kind of family connection as we're seeing, which is a theme here in the SFL. And uh, now St. Louis is going to get the ball back. So, so a good opening drive from the Gladiators' defense. That's what they needed. They needed that a, a three and out type situation so they can get their offense on the field and see if they can get it going and uh, get some points on the board. Still only a two possession game. Stutter stop. And they will start their drive at the 28. We'll see if they continue to loosen the reins a bit with ACL or if they're going to go back to the running attack with Denzel Diaz. Uh, they've had some good success throwing the ball, which is good. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're quite happy with that. Ten minutes to go in the third. Only a minute ticks off the clock on that last drive. Handoff, Diaz, counter to the left side. He's able to break it off tackle and pick up six. Wow, he did that all on his own because if he had it gone to the right side, he would have still been running. Uh, I don't know why ACL didn't change the run play because... Diaz made some guys miss to get, to get the yardage that he did. Well, and you got to appreciate that St. Louis was willing to make the quarterback change this late in the season because if you add a, a, a decent pass game to this run game, St. Louis could be getting going here in the next couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be able to run like Alaska or throw the ball like Alaska. Well, you have a run in the, with a run game like this. Yeah, a run game like that right there where he lost five yards. <laughs> well, other than that play, of course. So a stop there forces the Gladiators into third and eight. Non-contract end makes the tackle for loss. Three receivers will split out for a seal. That We've seen them run out of this package. They decide to throw here on third down. A seal stands in the pocket, delivers to Diaz, who is cut down behind the line. Obi Okoye, another tackle. They are getting well acquainted tonight. Yeah, they are. Okoye is all over the field, and he's been chasing Diaz everywhere he's gone. Uh, I guess it was pretty much a check down. It must have been we, unfortunately, with our camera. We can't always see the coverage down the field, but that was probably just a check down because everybody was covered. Oh, yeah, the chat is frustrated that we've given them the commentator's curse, and rightfully so, as the Gladiators will punt it back to San Antonio, who struggled on their first drive in this half. That's 
been a defense battle. Uh, <laughs> most of the games I've done so far this year have been a de defense battle, except for the uh, fiasco in San, San Francisco in week one. And I, I don't think the score tells exactly the tale of this game so far. Only at 16-0, the Gladiators are putting up a, a better fight than what the score kind of shows. They did kind of get screwed over on one of the uh, plays earlier where there was a fumble that, you know, catch, no catch, either way. It turns into points for the Vaqueros, and now they're going to have to come back for that as Silver is only able to get one there. Some good opening field tackle. Aiden Friday there. And this is similar to the game I had last week same thing playing fantastic defense and you just they couldn't move the ball on offense and we're seeing very similar effort here from st louis and st louis might have to go back after this week and start looking at their offensive game plan and making some changes the vaqueros got beat down by houston last week houston will be on after this game to take on vancouver in houston so we're going from one city in texas to the other as the vaqueros are able to make it third and short Great job there, kept catching the uh, non -con Was that non or is that uh, Ricardo? Nope, Ricardo is 46. That is a non-contract yeah. fullback there, yep. Caught him on the swing pass there. Keep it short. It's third and three, and still you have your full playbook. Handoff here, Silver, right side. What a tackle. Freeman Peltier closes, and they're going to say he's short. That's, uh, huh. we've been seeing a lot of that, that formation tonight. A lot of that formation tonight from both teams, actually. It's quite surprising to see that heavy set in the SFL. It's, you usually see a lot of open stuff. I'll be honest. I, I watched the replay on Twitch just to the right of me. Freeman Peltier just, he ran 10 to 15 yards to make that tackle before they picked up the first down. That is effort. And they will be rewarded. The punt will go into the end zone. They'll get the ball at the 20. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> we'll try not to curse them this time. Now nah, start moving the ball down the field. Uh, I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I'm quite surprised that they aren't being aren't running the ball better. I, they're having a decent game, but that 14th ranked running running defense against this rush offense is for more yardage. From the 20, 646 left to go in the third. Short drop, a seal, fires, caught, nine-yard pickup. It's a good play on first down. It's Charlie Northrup, another member of the Northrup family, making that grab up the middle. There's so many, isn't there? It's <laughs> I love it. I love it too. Yeah, there's, there's. It's great to have families involved in the, in, in the league. It's, it's great to see, especially if they're on different teams, because then that gets a little family rivalry going. Yeah, you put them in the, uh, the same room to watch the games. I, uh, I'll speak on that after this play. Diaz handoff. Tornado's his way. He's gonna not pick up a yard. It'll be third and three. Uh, in the next game, Mahmoud Ajilani gonna be playing defensive back for Vancouver. Badir Ajilani, his I believe brother, either brother or cousin. Um, uh, is on the Houston side of the field, so have a little family affair there as the two of them can sit down in the same living room um, and enjoy yeah, that one's, contest. One's wide receiver, one's a defensive back, so there's a chance they might go head to head. This one checked down to Diaz. Ooh, close. A great open field tackle the other way. That is number 38, BJ Armstrong. He came uh, from out of nowhere to make that tackle. Great yeah. job. He also right. gained five or six yards. So two great closing speed tackles, and that's going to force two punts on fourth and inches and very similar ends to drives. Yeah, St. Louis is going to have to make some adjustments here. They're just they're not getting anything going on the offensive side of the ball, and the defense is going to get tired of some of that, and it's, it's going to affect the score in a big way. So the Vaqueros retake over. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about their struggles last season. Um, Greg Corky really has turned this team around along with the help of uh, his general manager, Joey Langdon. Langdon, I feel like, was one of the, the players that kind of took on this rebuild along with Greg um, after last season felt like there was a lot of potential, a lot of stuff to work with. They actually ended the season pretty well, uh, winning a couple games down the stretch, and they've kind of carried that into this year. Um as they, you know, 
lose three yards. It seems like every time I talk about something positive, something negative happens for whoever I'm talking about. It seems to be the way it's been for us tonight. I mean, yeah, to go from last in their division last year, a three and three and nine in the old Western, and now they're in the running for the West. I mean, they have to deal with Alaska, and everybody has to deal with Alaska, but they still have a shot at the playoffs with the new playoff format. You know, there's there's no ruling out that they could make, make it in. They're gonna have some uh, issues with Vancouver, I think, along the way at some point. But it's good to see them going in the right direction. Langdon to throw, deep right side, tipped, oh, and St. Louis would have loved to get their hands on that one. Ended up incomplete, it'll still mean third and long for the Vaqueros. That was the, uh, quite the underthrown ball there. Just didn't get enough air on it and gave the defensive backs a chance to get to it. Four wide for San Antonio. Silver in the backfield. Very short drop. Quick throw. Caught. First down catch there by Daly Holder. It was close. I, I was worried we were going to end up with another fourth and inches. Yeah, that looked real close. Uh, disappointing for St. Louis. They couldn't get off the field on a fourth and, and, and really long. But, I mean, this is what San Antonio can do. They can chuck the ball around the field. They don't just have to. As, as it's... Seems like they've done. They've gotten away from Anderson Silver lately. Langdon, empty backfield, delivers. Silver there running a route as a receiver. Kind of a Le'Veon Bell move there. Picks up three. Yeah, sure, sure as it is. I say something about not using Silver, and they throw the ball to him. So shows what I know. I know Le'Veon Bell for the Pittsburgh Steelers as of now. Uh... He likes to pride himself. I think he said he's the second best receiver on the team, and, and Silver's kind of mirroring that here as he makes a nice grab there. Uh, maybe not second best, but I, I might give him fourth as uh, one of the better players. Holder there makes a grab on the outside and makes it third and short. Hey, he's de I mean, he's definitely a dual threat. They're not afraid to use him. He had six receptions last week. He's had uh, for six yards in his first game. Oh, so, and he's, he's got the only receiving touchdown tonight. Exactly. I mean, so... You got to watch for that too. He's not just a running threat; he's the dual threat, and 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 it seems like he's the piece they've missed from earlier in the season. Gladiators' chance to get off the field here on third and three. Langdon has two backs in the backfield, but will throw. Stands in the pocket, throws. Oh, incomplete! A great defensive play. I thought it was a pick, and uh, the Gladiators having trouble corralling it. Uh, shouldn't have ate all that popcorn before the game. I guess not. I mean, that was a terrible route there. The two receivers, one was um, the tight end, Ricardo Hernandez. He ran into the wide receiver, just threw him off his own route, and it ended up being a chance for St. Louis, a chance for pick six. That was Bo Knowles. Who knows if he's related to Beyonce, but he uh, could have single-manned his way all the way to the end zone if he could have beat Anderson Silver. But that all was fell to none as he couldn't make the grab. So this one will bounce at the two and roll in, and St. Louis will start their own 20 again. What do you think? Do you think we should be going to a back to Diaz or maybe open it up? I, I really do think we should open it up a little. I, I don't want to say anything because apparently it, it sounds like every time I... I <laughs> I give an idea, they do the opposite, it doesn't work, and, and then yeah. everyone in the chat's mad at me because we haven't seen a score since the first half. So on first and ten, I hope they just run a football play. A seal will dump off uh, off his back foot, and uh, Diaz will pick up a y uh, no yardage, and uh, they'll go back to the 20 for second down. That was a interesting play, to say the least. Diaz running to his right and throws it across his body to the left. Uh, luckily, nothing nothing bad came of it. It'll be second and ten. Three minutes to go in the third. They'll give to Diaz, and he is crushed. San Antonio is really starting to read that uh, shotgun handoff, and if you're Shan Varner, you're shaking in your boots. Yeah, it's not, not what they were looking for. Uh, and this is not good because they haven't been throwing the ball efficiently as, as we thought they may with the new quarterback. I don't know if that's he just doesn't trust him enough to open up the playbook. 
They're going to have to do something here. Third and long. A seal to throw. Well protected. Fires. Picked. Oh, and how did he get the feet in bounds? It was an amazing pick by B.J. Armstrong, the newcomer at quarterback. Let's check if he got the feet in. It was close. Ooh. The one foot was in, but it... Uh, with, do they use the, the one-foot rule on defense as well? And they're not challenging it by the looks of things. St. Louis, if you're going to give a pick out, you, you'd rather it be further down the field. Armstrong comes up with the interception, and now the Vaqueros are about 5 to 10 yards away from field goal range. Langdon throws on the run to, Arms, er, to uh, excuse me Silver, who's able to pick up three. I was still thinking about B.J. Armstrong able to tap the feet. Absolutely. Great catch. Keep himself in bound for his very first SFL interception. Great job, young man. Congratulations to BJ Armstrong. I hope he's watching. We got 40 viewers in the chat. We love it. I haven't seen enough bits, though. I hope you're saving them for the second game tonight. Vancouver heads to Houston. As DeMond pointed out, we're going to head right down the I-10 to uh, Houston, Texas. But for now, Langdon will stand in the pocket and delivers Poncho first down to the 20. Getting a lot of use out of Poncho so far this week. It's nice to see. Brand new guy getting involved in passing offense. Made quite a few catches. Yeah, it's it's very practical, whether it's cold or raining. You just put the poncho on and find your way into the red zone. Absolutely. Fortunately, the weather's a cooperator with us, and we haven't really needed to use the poncho. I hear the poncho works even better when he's playing down in Mexico City. <laughs> Langdon takes a shot and scores an amazing catch by Daly Holder. He sunned Colin Douglas in the end zone, and I, I, I have no words for what just happened. That was fantastic job by Holder to make this catch. He literally just jumped right over him. It took a gut shot. Langdon got wrecked in the pocket. That's a corner post route, or a post corner route, excuse me, and Holder is able to out jump Colin Douglas. Snatched it right away from Douglas. Thought he had an interception, and now they're kicking for an extra point. There's a lot of talk in the SFL, and I'll, I'm, I actually think I'll save this point for when we come out of the kickoff. I'll make everyone wait because we're gonna play a, uh, a good ad here as a flower glass is gonna add the extra point or at least attempt to. He does so. We will take a. 34 second break and be right back on the SFL on Twitch brought to you by APM Music. Join the world's fastest growing sim football community by jumping onto our Discord server. Use the Discord command in chat to keep up with schedules, news, notes, announcements, and polls. Jump off the sidelines and into the action. Here, where we're loading legends at the SFL. There was a lot of talk coming into, um, you know, the past couple weeks about which, you know, conference has been playing better. You kind of have the 5-0 and o teams at the top of each conference, and then there's a little bit more parity in the Eastern Conference than there is in the Western Conference right now. The Western Conference a little bit in shambles. Central Conference kind of sitting a little steady. But here the second best team in the Central Conference is getting wrecked by the third best team in the West. Um, obviously still plenty of time for the Gladiators as Nick Finch picks up the first end of the 32. Uh, but Jimmy, do you buy into this conference hype about the, the Central or the Eastern Conference being better than the West? Or, or do you think it's a little bit more even than that? I don't know. I mean, if uh, anybody... Yesterday, San Francisco pretty much should have beaten Tulsa yesterday. Tulsa got out of there licking their wounds. They were on one of the strangest plays I've ever seen, a, a fake punt, a field goal to win the game. Diaz. Going to lose a yard. So, so, I mean, and a lot of people were quite surprised to see Tulsa in the situation they were with San Francisco. So I think you're going to see some of the bottom teams start to make their way up as they figure out their – game plans and their, their their rosters. Gladiators to throw. A seal checks down to Diaz. Cut down in the backfield. He will lose a yard. That was Jared Olsen who has had some big hits tonight. Hey, he's another one that's been all over the field making lots of plays. Olsen's... Him and Okoye 
have been uh, making a lot of plays tonight. Yeah, defensively, those are the two guys. Six foot 207 for Olsen here in his second season in the SFL. Both of them with the Vaqueros on third and 11. A seal checking it down. That's not going to get done. I, I don't even need to see the tackle. That was not the throw you needed there. The uh, Gladiators are starting to look a little one-dimensional. Yeah, it's it's everything is literally going through Diaz, and you can't do that. End of the third, we're going to head to the final frame. 23-0, Gladiators going to punt it away to the Vaqueros at home who are going to try and put this one on ice. Well, the positive here, Jimmy, is that no matter the score here, there's a second game coming along with SFL today where we're going to go through the results of the weekend, talk about each game. It's going to be exciting as Vancouver heads to Houston, two games in Texas tonight as we have more Western Conference action. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game. Some conference rivals playing each other. Uh, Vancouver's starting, looking to try and make the move up and catch up to Alaska. Where uh, is Houston's doing themselves pretty well as, as well. I believe they're one of the 5-0 and 4-0 oh, teams. 5-0 oh teams. Uh, no, Houston's 2-2. Two and two. Vancouver is 1-3. They're going to be fighting here. Um, for the chance to sit behind San Antonio at the three spot in the West. As long as everything holds, Langdon gets wall up there. He's going to use lose six. The Gladiators got a little uh, penetration up the middle. <clears throat> yeah, it's about time they got some pressure. I don't know if it was that. Oh, there you go. Mo Biggins, big boy coming through the middle. Um, I, that looked almost like a design screenplay or something where they just ditched the blocks. Um, and Langdon, I don't know if you saw someone there. He didn't want to didn't want to risk an interception or what. Uh, but it's a loss of six, and now they'll have to spread him out. And this is, suits the uh, Vaquero style. Um, but he couldn't get that throw off as the late blitzer, uh, I believe Chad Longstreet, was coming around the edge. Another non-contract non making his uh, presence felt. We've been seeing a lot of that this year in the league so far. As a lot of non-contracts non making plays that you didn't think they would make. Yeah, when you deal with the uh, progression system that we're working in this year, uh, I, I'm guessing a lot of the times the players that consistently don't change are, are going to need to play big roles. And we kind of see that through the here the first uh, you know chunk of the season, and we're going to see if it stays put. Third and 16, Langdon off his back foot on the run. Douglas makes the tackle in the open field, and the Gladiators get one of the stops they need if they're going to try and get back into this ballgame. Yeah, that was just a dunk. I mean, they don't need to force anything. They're up by 23 points. They don't They don't need to take any crazy chances. Take the take the field position and kick it down deep and make St. Louis march the field, which they haven't been really to do since the first quarter. Yeah, for the Vaqueros, at this point, it's pretty much just bleed the clock um, and see if the Gladiators can beat you through the air. Um, they're going to have to start at the 26. Do you like or do you hate what you've seen out of Dylan Asil tonight? He, he had uh, the one late interception that kind of was really what hurt the, the Gladiators the most now, making it a uh, three-possession game. Let's go. I, I mean, St. Louis is, like you said, uh, last last time they were out. They're, they're doing everything through Diaz, and they're not giving him a chance to throw to his other receivers. It's making it easy for San Antonio to defend. Shotgun here on first down. The backs run out. Here's a long throw. A seal hits Nick Finch, and Finch slides to the 47. And, I mean, Finch is the only one that's really done anything on the side today. They haven't really called Cody Scott's name at all, and Elijah Swain's made a couple catches. Yeah, it's, really, it's that one uh, play from the big bunch where Swain runs the out route. That's where he kind of gets the play. But Nick Finch, a nice catch there. A seal kind of showing he's got a little drop in the bucket, maybe showing off why he's in St. Louis right now instead of Ethan Alexander. Absolutely. I mean, it, his rating isn't great, but, I mean, they're not they're really giving him a chance to throw the ball unless it's third and long. And that's a tough, tough way to earn a living. A seal stands in the pocket, delivers. Diaz picks up a yard. That they, they really dig the check down, and it looks like the Vaqueros have done their homework. Absolutely. I mean, if you're just going to keep throwing check downs and run out of these big and jumbo formations, you're making it real easy for the defensive coordinator to spot what you're up to. And here we go again. They're in a, a jumbo once again. 
Second and nine, 848 to go. Time continues to roll. A seal changing the play at the line. He'll give it to Diaz up the gut. Diaz makes it third and eight. Yeah, you just they're 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 getting very predictable on offense right now. And it, and it's not making it easy in a seal now because he's got third and eight, third and nine, third and seven. That's that's really tough for a quarterback to make those throws every time. Now on third and eight, a seal thrown on the run. That's not going to get it done. It's incomplete. And uh, the Gladiators are going to have to send out the punting unit again. At some point, you got to start going for it here. Absolutely. I mean, and again, that's one of, that speaks to the reason why they're last in third down percentage at 29% coming into this game. If you're forcing your quarterback to throw on third and eight, third and nine, third and ten all the time, it's just not going to get it done. Punt is away, 8.13 left to go. Vaqueros handily in the lead, but I, I don't think Greg Corky or uh, Joey Langdon would mind adding some extra points if they could find them. Oh, wouldn't you? I mean, I believe points is part of the tiebreak going into the playoffs. So the more you can put up, the better, better it is for you. Indeed, it does play a, uh, a small role, so it might be worth... Uh, Improving upon that if you have the opportunity. You gotta think this is Anderson Silver. Silver time. Oh, and he's got some room. Down the left side. Silver. Across the 50. And he'll go down at the 34. What a run. Anderson Silver now breaks 105 yards. Nine carry seems low, but boy, has he been effective. That's a second 100 yard game in, in as many. And, uh,. Look at this blocking. Look at that block right there by it. Looked like Poncho made the Poncho made the play there, but he just ran out of gas at the end. They haul him down. Haul him down. Well, and part of that probably can be chalked up to him right. not playing, you know, all the games until this point. You can't blame the guy for running out of steam. Absolutely not. Just uh, he's, you know, he's looking to go to the house down from behind like that. Yeah, the uh, the teammates will razz him, but in a way, it almost works better because now they can bleed more clock as uh, Langdon takes a sack. Let's see who that was. Oh, 97. That is a non-contract non defensive end. We get good production out of their non-contracts today, St. Louis has. Actually better than their big paid contract defensive line. That, yeah, at, at times you're, you're exactly right. That's just kind of the way of the SFL. Langdon, quick throw, incomplete. Uh, that quick hitter did not work. You, you usually expect those plays to be a little bit safe, but he couldn't find uh, Daly Hornish there. No, it looked like St. Louis was all over that play. Like they, all those gold jerseys <laughs> sitting there waiting to make a play. Unfortunately, they couldn't make the interception. Yeah, that was 31 Nick Daggs. First time we've called his name tonight. Quiet night, but, uh, you know, trying to get it done. It's been a rough one for him. Yeah, they've been, uh, it's been a struggle. But they've been on the field so much. They were very much on their heels for a lot of the game. Langdon fires, caught, and a good open field tackle there. That's Peltier again, who's able to cut down uh, the receiver before he could pick up the first down. I mean, there you see the quarterback comparison. Over 250 yards now for Joey Langdon. Yeah, and, and you expect him to get his yardage. That's just what their offense does. But now that they've added this weapon in Anderson Silver... Yeah, they're going to be a challenge for a lot of teams going down the stretch. So the long field goal attempt here on fourth and two with six and a half to go in the fourth is away. That kick is up and through from 42 yards. We're going to pause and we will be back here on the SFL brought to you by APM Music. Want to do what I do? Contact me in the DM on Discord to find out how you can get involved with streaming live games, calling games, or breaking them down on the air with our broadcast team. Or help make our production even better by joining our new live stats team, helping our broadcasters shine brighter. We are hashtag loading legends in the SFL. So San Antonio will kick it back here, now up 26 to nothing over the Gladiators. Gladiators just kind of playing for pride now with a little bit over six and a half to go. 
Yeah, and I would think that now is the time. You, the game's pretty much out of hand unless you get some crazy stuff, which does happen in this league. Let's not kid ourselves. But where you just open up the playbook and let ACL, let's see what he can do. Yeah, you brought him here for a reason. I think now, I think you're right. I think now is the time that if you're going to kind of see what he's got in the tank, and uh, it, it's going to help you heading into next week. Instead, they're going to feed Diaz again, and no more yards for him. And Akoya, once again, look at this, nine tackles, force fumble. He's uh, He's been a beast today on the defensive side, and that's yeah. what they needed from him. Yeah, strong showing from uh, Obi Akoye and the San Antonio run defense, really, as a whole, has been, uh, you know, doing enough. They, they're not flashy, but they got the job done. As uh, they'll, I, I guess the Gladiators are content with just kind of getting out of this game, getting back on the plane, and heading back to Missouri. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, as a, as a coach, I would have thought you'd want to see what ACL's got, but I guess they're not ready for that being its first game at all. They're just going to continue to go with these jumbo formations and hand the ball off to Diaz. Well, and there, I think there's something to be said for keeping his confidence up. If if that's what you need to do, um, is head into that next week with you know him still feeling good, go for it. Uh, he, he drops a pass there on third and long, um, and so the Gladiators are going to have to punt. Maybe you know just trying to keep his uh, confidence you know higher then lower, you know, he goes out here, he throws a pick, that doesn't bode well for next week, but, you know, some incompletions, that's not the worst thing in the world, he gets some completions under his belt, and he can head into next week, you know, feeling positive about what happened, and how he can correct it. Absolutely, and, and again, leaving him to throw on third and eight, third and nine, third and ten all game long isn't, isn't going to help his confidence either. You gotta let him get some of those, you know, slants and little things in there, just to easy completion his confidence back up. But it is a punt here, and San Antonio will pick up on their own 41-yard line. Game well in hand, uh, but the Vaqueros are not looking to give up just quite as uh, all the points matter in the Western Conference when you're trying to chase Alaska, who's got 76 up at the top of it. Yeah, that Alaska, I watched them last week. They're scary. They're, they're, they're definitely, everybody was questioning having the running back, but it's really proved out for them. Well, timing-wise, it's going to work great because the Vaqueros next week will head to take on the Alaska Storm for, I believe, the second time this season. They lost to them earlier in the year, and uh, next week they're going to have to take on the Storm. I saw Mighty RX in the chat might have been doing some scouting. Yeah, and I mean, they're going to have to face this uh, more balanced offense that San Antonio has with Anderson Silver, it's going to make their defense maybe cringe a little bit because it's not just going to be throw, throw, throw. They're going to have to deal with a, a really productive running back over 200 yards in two games. Can't complain about that. Not at all. It's going to be second and six. Langdon will dump it middle of the field. Another great catch. I This receiving core for San Antonio has blown me away as Daly Holder makes yet another grab. Yeah, it's this. That's why I say it. Next week, watching them against the round two should be really interesting because you're getting two of the more prolific passing offenses going up against each other. It should be a barn burner. I'll be uh, definitely tuning in to watch myself. Yeah, that one will take place on the 11th of February. More SFL action coming. The halftime of next game they're going to announce the team that will be on the front page of twitch next week very exciting stuff coming for the sfl cam has been doing a lot of hard work here as uh silver loses three there but uh i'm really excited to see which which game gets that one there's a lot of ones a lot of good games that could be up there yeah that's that's gonna be a lot of fun to see who wins that game is that the is that a fan vote game i never no no really that's noticed, definitely so. a uh broadcast uh decision i, I talked to cam yesterday i know he was working on um figuring out which game they wanted to put in there because with so many eyes you want to make sure it's a, a quality um game and there's not too much chance of a blowout obviously this is the sfl um, things like that happen, but if you can limit that, that's probably best as Silver just falls down in bounds and keeps that clock running. 
Yeah, it's too bad. You got to think that San Antonio, that especially the way San Antonio's this week. But they have a Sunday game, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Not at all. So it's going to be third and long. You dare throw it here. Or, I mean, you're at the 40. You just kind of hand it off and try and protect this shutout with the defense. You'd think they'd run it, but this is San Antonio. So you never. Greg Corky has never been gun shy, and here on third and 15, it looks like Langdon will throw. Stands in the pocket. Great protection. Still protected. Throws. Caught there. A nice grab by Daly Hornish. They're well short, but he does come down in bounds, and uh, they can pretty much get this as very close to the two-minute warning. Yeah, great coverage by St. Louis down the field, but even better protection by the offensive line. Give them lots of time, and all they could really do is go to that cross right across the middle. We want to but thank. They get to run the clock off. Yeah, we want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in here on the SFL on Twitch. Brought to you by APM Music. More football coming. The SFL Today Show is next with Cameron Irvine along with some analysts. And then at, following that, it's Vancouver at Houston in the SFL Fan Night Game of the Week here on Twitch. So stay tuned. Watch some ads. Get those bits ready as San Antonio might make the best special teams play. And that's just a perfect cap on the evening. The Vaqueros lead. They will take the victory. But let's see if St. Louis can get anything done. D the tail of the tape right there. Yeah, Diaz, 2.7 yards per carry. He's standing halfway deep into his own end zone. Uh, this could get dangerous. Uh, Seal, or Seal, excuse me, checks down. Diaz able to pick up seven. Now the Gladiators kind of getting back to that hurry up. Yeah, Diaz kind of screwed himself on that one. If he had to stay outside, so it's been inside. He might have still been running. A seal fires first down catch to Nick Finch. The backups might be in. Just kind of telling by the way that St. Louis is moving the ball. We haven't really seen that at all tonight. No, and it's garbage time. We all know that. If you're a fantasy football guy, this is the time you either love or the time you hate. Garbage time? Sounds like dinner for me. <laughs> no, wouldn't that be ramen noodle time? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, but I can't afford the water to heat it up. It's just, you know, <laughs> eating it like it's a chip. <laughs> a seal to throw, avoids a sack, fires, nearly picked off. It's incomplete, luckily for a seal. Already has the one interception tonight, B.J. Armstrong. Yeah, and I mean, again, you're, you're asking a lot out of the quarterback at this point in time. And, and then, like you said earlier, is it a matter of do we right. throw it and let him get his confidence or you just try and get out of there and not kill his confidence by throwing an interception. Right. The the Vaqueros actually last season did a, a really interesting experiment that went along with, you know, kind of what we're talking about in the Vancouver and San Antonio game last season. Two winless teams went into the game as a seal is able to hit there. A nice throw to Nick Finch down to the 44. They went into the game winless. Um, both teams, you know, neither had had a win 0-5 or 0-4, I think, going into the game. Um, and, and that was a barn burner. I believe the final was 59 or 52-49. Um, the game ended on a safety. I don't know if you've seen it, Jimmy, since you're relatively uh, newer to the league. If you haven't watched it, for anyone out there, it's quality football. Um, I, I really think if you have not seen that game, it, it's you have to watch it for the SFL's sake. It, it's great. Langdon and Tom Pepper, both rookie quarterbacks, threw plenty of interceptions. Um, and, and I think it, it helped Joey and the San Antonio team to go into this year and know, you know, hey, it, it's not the end of the world if we throw a bunch of picks if we come out on top because I think, um, and Mighty's refreshing me in the chat, it was 51-49 with 17 turnovers. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, it, it, a team won that game. I, I think that was the takeaway that I took away from it coming out um, – as the owner of Vancouver winning the game, we, we won that game. I don't care how many picks you throw if you get the win. Exactly. He almost threw another one there. Trying to force it a bit in double coverage. But, I mean, at least they're giving the chance to throw. I think that's that's the best bet, just kind of going on what you're saying. I mean, if he doesn't get a chance to throw the ball, you're not going to be able to know what he does. 
So the defense here in San Antonio, got to give it up to the fans, 26 to nothing. They are staying to cheer on their hometown Vaqueros. Got to love it when your team goes from having a rough year to a good one. And now that throw by a seal is caught. The 41, and now the Vaquero, or the uh, Gladiators, excuse me, go hurry up. And I mean, they're going, hey, what a terrible formation to go. But I mean, it's giving them a chance to throw. A seal stands in the pocket, delivers a floater. It's incomplete. You hate to see that. Wide it open and hits him right in the hands. Kind of the epitome, just kind of prolonging what's, you know, inevitable at this point. Absolutely. Um, if you can get on the board, that's great, but, you know, at, at what cost? If we're going to be here another 30 minutes, uh, <laughs> like I said, I got stale ramen to eat. Three receivers, bottom of the screen in a bunch. We've seen this formation, and usually it's a handoff. Instead, a seal will throw out of this one. Deep down the field, nearly picked off again. I, I tell you what, that man is going to have plenty of push-ups uh, when it comes to next week because he's dropped three. Yeah, and it's a good thing it isn't their natural safety. Nicholas Warner back there, or they might be, or Jared Olson for that matter, they might be looking at three pick sixes or something along that line. Luckily, it's been the backup non-contract. A seal to throw, third and 10, under a minute. Completes, they're down to the 31. They're going to go hurry up. This at least is a better formation. For you know that better. A seal, out route caught, drag the feet. It's only worth a yard. You gotta think he's gonna take a shot here. They're um, close enough in. You might as well take a shot. There's Cody Scott. At least you're you're working some, uh, you know, you're working some uh, relationship continuity. work there. Yep, yeah, some continuity. Greg Corky says we're having a great call. I appreciate it, Greg, especially considering the fact that I had to bring up uh, the time I beat you on a safety at the end of the game. I, I figured that would have soiled your mood, but apparently not. <laughs> I miss my, my my albino buddy Curtis priority engaged there is a touchdown toss a nice throw and catch and just as i mentioned him cody scott finds his way into the end zone from dylan a seal the goose egg is ruined and uh the vaqueros can't secure the shutout no i mean we hadn't really called his number all game long pass is there gets that little out route for a yard and then they throw him on a post for a touchdown cody scott at least gets back on the board and Nick Finch shouts in the chat, or I assumed shouts. It's all caps. I, I We're on the internet. We know that's a shout. He shouts, come back. Uh, 39 <laughs> seconds. You got your three timeouts. I I tell you what, I don't know how good of an arm a uh, seal has. If they can get this uh, onside kick, which I feel like is probably going to happen, I'd just chuck it deep right off the bat. Throw four Hail Marys, and if you hit one of them, hey, you're you're getting right back in this game. Sure, why not? I mean, Cody Scott's a big guy, 6'5", 225. When at this point, you might be able to sneak one off him if the backups are still in. Unfortunately for them, uh, the Vaqueros were able to pick it up, and ironically, number 26, the one man who has not been able to put away the game uh, for hands. San Antonio, Hakeem Allen, the cornerback, makes the grab on the onside kick and Vaqueros take over and the backups are in full effect. John McDaniel is in. And a little victory for formation, let him lose the timeouts. The best, the best formation in football. Um, Gladiators using the timeouts, which I think at this point is pretty much just to pain me from not eating for another 10 minutes. That's the old Bill Bill Parcells move. Wait a minute, I got time up. A couple more plays. I think it's one of those teams where, uh, or one of those things where, when Colin Douglas and Dwayne Schindler go to talk to the media, they want to be able to tell that they can, uh, that they had done everything that they possibly could. You know, it's like a doctor thing. You got to do it, even if it's over. Absolutely. Another timeout is taken uh, 35 seconds. That'll pretty much do it. Vaqueros are going to improve. The St. Louis Gladiators are going to fall here in Texas. The Vaqueros, excuse me, as the website is going to load up for me because I was not on the right webpage. Vaqueros are going to improve 
all the way up to three and two, move into second in the Western Conference, pending uh, later results tonight as Houston takes on Vancouver. Um, St. Louis is going to fall to three and two, which will actually dump them down behind Sioux Falls, I believe, if I'm doing my math here correctly, based on the net points, as the Sparrows are three and two with a net point of one. They will move up to second in the Central Conference. Um, later action coming tonight, Vancouver is in Houston to take on the Hyenas. Uh, Cameron Irvine, along with Curtis, will have that call that will follow the SFL today. Great football this week. More of it is on the way. Stay tuned. Get your bits ready. Jimmy, thank you for being here. I always appreciate it. It was a great time. Yeah, we had a good time. Uh, wish the game would have been a little closer. But it was still fun all in all. The Caros get the win. Stick with us here. The SFL brought to you by APM Music on Twitch. More action coming after this one.